If you don't understand what terror is, then he's just going to have to drill it in you. Here's your look at the new NECA toys. This is the Slumber Party Massacre. Retro Cloth, Russ, Thorn. A high school student slumber party turns terrifying as an escaped mental patient with a drill decides to crash the evening. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall Russ Thorne stands, putting the tape measure right to the very top of his head. Obviously, because he's also a retro cloth figure, means he's going to be a little bit taller than your standard 7-inch tall NECA figure. So, we'll just make sure I get the right to the very top. There we go. Just right there. According to the tape measure, I had to kind of make sure I had it right to the very top of his head. The figure, the killer from Slumber Party Massacre, stands 7.9 inches in height. In centimeters, that works out to be 20.1, a little over 20 centimeters tall. Let's look at the accessories that come included with the killer from Slumber Party Massacre. Ironically enough, I always thought his name was simply just coined the Driller Killer. But his name, according to IMDB and the credits in the film, is actually Russ Thorne. I'd have to go back and watch the film again. How ironically enough, though, Slumber Party Massacre 2, the credits actually depict the killer as the Driller Killer. So there you go. As living up to the name Driller Killer, not so much in the first film, he certainly does still come included with a drill to which he does kill a lot of things, a lot of people. The drill is rather actually impressive for the time period in which the Slumber Party Massacre was created. Sort of a hefty duty, hefty drill. As you can see, it's already been used a couple of times at least as each of the individual threads of the drill have been laced with a very shiny coat of blood red paint. Or is it paint? It is paint. I wanted to go with a dramatic pause, but it, it is paint. The base of the drill looks like to be the primary coloring of the plastic that they sculpted the entire piece from. And then they simply have just painted little accent pieces like the handle on the back has been done in that same crimson red. Some nice little rivet points added to the edge portions there as well. And then you've got the main section, the main drill, done in a brushed silver. It's brushed in the way that you can still see some of the black peeking its way through, and the individual in-between sections of the drill thread is also still kept somewhat clean. Somewhat clean, while, there, of course, the rest of the outer bands are still done, like I said, in the red. It fits in his hand. I'll show you guys that in a second as well. I want to go through a couple of the other accessories first and foremost. comes with a really long, bladed knife. That is a very long knife. The handle is long, the blade is long. That is quite a considerably long knife. I don't know why I'm so hung up on how long this knife is, but it's really a lot longer than most knives that you get with retro cloth figures. It sort of uh, does look a little bit bigger too when you look at how small this character is in the film. That's a pretty broad looking knife. Anyways, I don't want to keep pointing out how long this knife is. It does have a lot of blood on it splattered on both sides it, see there's a little bit more of a speckling of blood on the one side and just a good helping of the red stuff on the other side again you've got the little rivet points for how the knife are, is put together yeah they didn't paint this section the in-between section of the handle in the silver to show that the, the actual metal of the blade has been sandwiched in between the plastic handles but that's okay it still is a nice looking knife he also comes included with a hand, a relatively clean looking hand. It goes on this side of his body. I guess it's ideal if you want to have him holding the knife. Um, the knife itself does fit into this hand. Although you got to be careful when you're putting any of these accessories into his hand. The blade, of course, could snap if you put a lot of pressure to it. The drill could snap if you put some pressure to that. 
So just to show you though, it does fit into his hand. Ironically enough though, the blood is all over the knife and the blood is all over the drill. It is the one thing on this figure that doesn't actually have blood on it. I know, I know, the denim on the denim look doesn't have blood on it either. But when you look at that blood all over his hands and his face, this hand remains pretty unscathed by, again, that red stuff. There's no blood anywhere on his hands to speak of. We'll put that right over there. Before we get into looking at the figure a little bit more so, I want to show you how you can put the drill into his hand. It would look immediately like it's a bit on the awkward side, but really everything about this killer in the movie is awkward looking, right down to the fact of how he holds the drill. He sort of hunches his way over and kind of just moves across the screen. I quoted, I think at the time when I first saw this movie, to friends who were watching it with me, that I felt he moved like a peacock. I don't even know what that meant when I said it then, and I don't even know what it means now to say it again, but the killer sort of moved across the screen like he was a very proud peacock. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I was a little bit. I don't know. But that is how he holds the drill. He does have the means to hold it in both of his hands. Of course, as you're putting it into the hands of the killer, you want to be careful, again, that you don't put a lot of pressure on this. This is a very, very thin plastic. So be very, very careful of that. Let's go ahead and take this out of his hands. Just like so. There's one, and we'll just slide that out. We'll put that to the side. And we'll have a look here at Russ Thorne. And again, there's nothing really quite intimidating about this killer. He's probably one of the least intimidating killers in all the slasher films. He doesn't have a mask. Instead, what he sports is a denim jacket and denim pants. He's denim on denim, hunched over like a peacock with his drill in hand. The likeness, I have to admit, is pretty good, all things considered, for a really a killer I never expected to see ever as a NECA figure, let alone as a retro cloth figure. But here is the killer Russ Thorne, played by Michael, I believe it was Michael Valela, uh, who played the killer in the movie. Again, nothing really intimidating about him, a very short killer as well, not drawing a lot of attention to the fact that this character is so small, but the likeness is actually quite good. The paint is exceptionally clean. Looking at some of the other comparisons to retro cloth figures that we looked at in the past, of course the, uh, well, Silent Night, Deadly Nights, Billy and Ricky respectively, the sculpts were good, but the paint sort of let them down as well as the reanimator as well. Dr. Herbert West was also slightly disappointing because the paint really did let down such a great looking sculpt. Here though, both the sculpt, the likeness, and the paint to actor Michael Valela, I think has actually done really, really well. There's no bleeding, there's no splotching of paint. All the details are just as clear as I would imagine as the original production shot of how this figure was going to look before it was, of course, mass circulated. I'm certain that NECA probably has improved from the few little hiccups that they had along the way for retro cloth figures. They certainly have started to really step up their game, if you ask me, when it comes to the likenesses and the paint especially. Like I said, for Russ Thorne, this is a really nice looking head sculpt. He's sort of very neutral facially expressed as well. Like he doesn't have any big, you know, he doesn't have any big smile, sinister smile on his face. He's sort of very neutrally, he has a very neutral expression on his face. He's got some blood, of course, splattered onto the side as well. Really, really happy with, again, how this one turned out. Underneath his jacket is uh, I, pretty much how his build was in the movie. Very lanky, very uh, very undefined, very unmuscular. Again, he wasn't the he was probably one of the least intimidating killers, as I already mentioned already. He does have his denim jacket, which is nicely tailored there. Some seam lines done around the pocket sections. He does also have pockets on the side, but they're not they're not real working pockets or anything like that. And he does have faux buttons. Not the means that you could have, of course, attached these to one another. They're simply just, as you can see, just the indications of button snaps. But they don't actually attach to anything on the other side. He's got quite a bit of blood on both hands. He's, again, been very generously spreading the word of the drill to anyone who would 
voluntarily or non-voluntarily, uh, of course, accept the invite. And he does have a whole lot of it. As you can see, it's quite still wet on his hands, not literally wet to the touch. Nothing's coming off onto my hands, but I really like the fact that it doesn't look like it's dried. He's very, uh, well, like I said, he's very, <laughs> he does a lot of killing, certainly to say the least, with that drill. Uh, quite the resourceful tool of the trade as well for him to be using a drill of all things to kill all of his victims. As we move further down, more denim. Surprise. No surprise at all there. He's got more denim going on down below, and then he's got rather shiny shoes. The interesting thing about these shoes is that they actually have hinges to them. And not only do they have hinges, but he does also seem to have foot articulation. Uh, let me just stop for a second and let you digest that. And I hope, if anything, you're sitting down. This retro cloth figure has articulation in the feet. Anybody that probably hasn't collected these over the years doesn't understand why that seems like such a big, big step for figure producing. But up to this point, NECA toys have really just only used hinge joints. That's all you can really do with these retro cloth figures. The very idea that you can now hinge those feet back and forth, that's pretty impressive. And I hope that follows suit with future retro cloth figures. Of course, he's got pegs on the undersides of his feet. So if you want to have this proud peacock sort of sidestepping his way through the dark hallways of the house, I would probably make use of a display stand. Display stand did not include or did not come included with the figure. I added one for the opener of this review. But, uh, you know, if you do want to get him in a bit of a more walking pose, I would make use of a display stand most definitely. Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's articulation. His head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and it also rocks back and forth. He also has a waist articulation, which also serves as a ball joint. I feel as if ball joints are new, are they not? I feel like this would have been all one articulated point, but now it seems he has a hinge joint right there. I'd have to go back and check some of my old retro cloth figures. I don't think that the older ones actually possessed an ab crunch. And if so, I'm glad that they're starting to throw these extra things to the mix. Sort of beef up what you can actually do with these figures themselves. The arms move, uh, well, they move forward, they move back. They're a little hung up, unfortunately, on the denim jacket. There we go. You can see as you move the arm forward, the jacket gets a little on the tight side around the shoulder section. And you can move the arm back. Moves arms, of course, out. He has a bend at the elbow. You can rotate the forearm, and you can rotate and hinge the hand. When it comes to Russ Thorne's lower half, his legs split out. You can go forward, you can go back, you can swivel at the top cut of the thigh, you single hinge on the knee, and as we already discussed, what a nice surprise to see that they also put the hinge joint as well as articulated ankle pivots. Fine work, fine work that they would actually incorporate that to this retro cloth figure. Hopefully that's not the end of what we see with fully articulated feet. Of course, the real problem with some of the older retro cloth figures is that their feet are always sort of on an angle. You can never get quite firm, flat footing with a lot of your retro cloth figures, but I don't have this problem at all with Russ Thorne. He actually stands perfectly fine. Again, he's not the most intimidating of killers in slasher films, but he certainly stands out, if anything else, as he is the killer, of course, that has the drill, and he's got the denim on denim look. Whenever I have friends coming over to watch a horror film at my house and they've never gotten into the slasher genre, my own personal favorite of the horror film genres, I usually introduce Slumber Party Massacre as that introductory. I slide that one across the table and I usually say, you should check this out. And what follows with that is usually hilarity, people laughing and joking at the fact that these are supposed to be teenage girls when, who are we really kidding? They look like they're in their early to mid 30s the lead character in the film well what we believe to be the lead ca uh, character in the film her mother looks actually younger than she does she looks like she's in her mid to late 30s of course one of the other things that go along with slumber party massacre is a rather ridiculous looking killer who i don't know again why i use the term peacock but i swear he moves like he's a peacock of course, he's got a very long drill that's almost as big as he is, and he's denim on denim. To the credit of NECA Toys for the very idea that we are getting ourselves a Russ Thorne retro cloth figure. Let that just sink in for a second. 
The ridiculousness of Slumber Party Massacre and all the enjoyment that I get from watching that film, we now can actually look at a Russ Thorne retro cloth figure. Ironically enough, and this is the funny thing about it, I don't even think he's actually called Driller Killer at all. Certainly in the IMDB breakdown of the film, he's simply just called Russ Thorne. It's not until Slumber Party Massacre 2 that he's actually coined the Driller Killer, at least in the credits. One thing I certainly would love to see, leading then away from Slumber Party Massacre 1 and into Slumber Party Massacre 2 territory, wouldn't it be awesome to get ourselves a retro cloth figure of the Slumber Party Massacre 2 Driller Killer, complete all leather clad instead of denim on denim. He's leather on leather, and of course he has that over-the-top guitar drill. Man, I'd love to see that happen. NECA Toys, if you are in the fancy of continuing the Slumber Party Massacre tradition, please, oh please, do give us a Driller Killer 2 from uh, Slumber Party Massacre 2. He's not really called Driller Killer 2, but Slumber Party Massacre 3, it's... But don't even bother watching it. It's not even worth it. But Slumber Party Massacre 1 and 2 are recommended watches, if you ask me, if you want to get into the slasher genre of horror films. Just FYI, though, Slumber Party Massacre 2 does have a lot of musical numbers. That may deter you a bit. But that sort of adds the appeal to the splendor that is Slumber Party Massacre 2. Definitely one of my personal favorites to watch, especially when I have friends coming over that have never seen either one of the films. Slumber Party Massacre is it for me. The, fil the figure of Russ Thorne is a splendid sight to be seen. Again, denim on denim. And we have to step back and sit down for a second and acknowledge the fact that NECA Toys actually put hingeable feet where you can actually put ankle pivots on the figures. They actually put that on this figure. Hopefully that is going to be a moving forward tradition. It certainly does allow the figure to stand a whole lot better than some of the earlier outings for retro cloth. So nicely done, NECA Toys. Not only did you give a nice homage to one of my all-time favorite slasher films, but you also improved the model makeup for your particular your figures by incorporating articulated feet. And for that, I say a thank you. If you are new to this channel, maybe you're a longtime viewer and never got around to it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. As well, make sure you turn on that bell notification. Apparently it works. I don't know. It might not even work, but turn on that bell notification and keep your peepers peeled because there's going to be a whole lot of future videos coming soon to your channel, to this channel, to our channel. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.